good morning or good afternoon. Um, I'm happy to um, greet you right here at this webinar for integrating simulation, integrating Sim Manager with CAE tools for higher productivity. Um, we have a quite dense schedule, so I will be starting immediately um, with the agenda. Um, so first of all, I will give you a very short introduction into Sim Manager and uh, our strategies for CAE integration. Um, this will be followed and this will constitute the major um, 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 part of this webinar will be two demonstrations of Sim Manager for very basic simulation processes um, on which we want to explain to you the the foundations and the, the concepts which we have in terms of executing simulations and managing particularly the methods and tools uh, alongside in Sim Manager. With those demonstrations, we, I will then do a recap and I will highlight some architectural um, aspects of Sim Manager which go along with the CAE integration um, of those applications within the Sim Manager inter, um, environment and we'll close um, with a summary slide. First of all, I want to just position Sim Manager and which industry needs we are really focusing on with this um, solution, with this simulation process and data management solution. So the industry need we are observing is, is that you know, there are many engineering environments which have to handle many products and derivatives, many duty cycles, many multi-stage, multidisciplinary simulations. We see customers which have regulatory environments and liability issues where they need to use simulations and document all their, um, their simulation activities they have performed. There are many organizations which have huge needs for optimizing performance and need to perform a huge set of simulations. And we have organizations which just bluntly cannot cover all the, have unfulfilled headcounts. So they, the only strategy they have is to make their engineers they have as efficient as possible. To address those industry needs, really the sweet spot and what the manager provides is we provide a consistent data and process management system which removes all the headaches engineers have around bookkeeping, documenting their simulation results and their simulation data and their simulation models. And this is what we compass, okay, which we encapsulate in the, in the concept of CAE data management. Now, we do the CAE data and we also address aspects of CAE process throughput, allowing you to run, while you're doing data management, efficiently simulation processes particularly across multiple disciplines. And then, finally, to encompass everything within the bigger product lifecycle management environment, which uh, was the main topic I had in the last webinar um, one month ago, right here um, at, uh, in this webinar. Okay, so moving on, we are gonna present today Sim Manager 2014. This is going to be an alpha release. We are planning to release Sim Manager 2014 in the summer time frame. The goal of Sim Manager 2014 is that it is a product which is easy for customers to deploy, to configure, and immediately get benefits. Something you should realize is, is that the core capabilities of this product solution and this product offering were developed in conjunction with BMW over three years. And really everything that you see in this, every functionality that BMW currently is using is, in, is part of the product offering that um, will be deployed. The goal really right here is to have absolute minimal customization, if at all. So really everything functionally being custom productized and giving you the ability to very easily, with user interface, in a very flexible manner to configure the system towards your simulation processes, um, encompassing all the methods and tools you're using, your best practices. And this will be one of the main theme of this presentation um, um, of this webinar. So with that, very short introduction to Sim Manager. 
um, I will jump into one of the key central aspects, and that is the CAE process management. What we have done in Sim Manager is instead of you having to construct workflows, simulation workflows, we are actually providing in the system a generic simulation workflow which is configurable, which has an underlying data model and is very flexible and has very clearly defined interface points. Within that framework, and through that framework, you have the ability to manage all your simulation methods, scripts, um, session files, and tools like, like an, a solver or a post-processor or a pre-processor in an, in, an, in a very intuitive way. The important part being that these tools and these methods, these scripts are not hard-coded in the background in some kind of customization scripts, but that the scripts and the methods are managed as data objects, equivalent to the actual simulation data objects, giving you all the flexibility of managing, of doing their revision and their version control of those aspects, um, allowing you to easily exchange them and really to manage also both interactive and batch processes. Okay. And this means that you can evolve the system, you can introduce new disciplines, you can change your processes as CAE evolves. And one thing we have learned in our past over 15 years of experience in building such systems is, is that CAE is in constant flux. So building a system where you hardwire, where you, where, you, where you very strictly codify processes is something which will end eventually in a dead end. You need to have a system which allows you to evolve your processes forward, which allows you to switch and change those processes. And this is something which we will try to convey today that we have right here with the manager, a very differentiated solution on the market for this purpose. Now, something I want to point out is because we are putting so much emphasis on process management and allowing you to really run the processes very automatically, very fast, is that you can actually create quite quite amount of data. So right here is a diagram of the simulation generator, which we'll be showing you where you can assemble products and run with multiple load cases and really exercise with very simple mouse clicks, initiate multiple simulations, creating tons of key results, thousands of key results, thousands of images curves. Now, having just a system which manages that is not sufficient. Because what you actually need is you also need within the system an ability to then collate and, and aggregate those data in digestible, consistent formats like a report. And so what we're also going to show in this demonstration is that we manage the process, the simulation process, from the simulation, from initiating a simulation all the way through to generating the reports. So with that short introduction, focusing on CAE integration, let me just highlight the demonstration. I will have two slides on, each, on, on, on both the basic simulation process and on the advanced simulation process we're going to present to you. And, um, and Darshan um, will give you then the actual demonstration. Okay. So the first demonstration is something very simple, which I assume many of you do as a day-to-day -day business. It is... You have an input deck, an Astron input deck, or it could be, an, in our case, it is an Astron input deck as demonstration, but it could also be an Abacus, a PAM crash, Elastina, and this input deck. You have an input deck, and you want to just kind of like compute it, do some post-processing, and do a report generation. This is something we show to you. And what is important, which we'll demonstrate to you, is that each one of those steps has very clearly distinct defined interface points, which you can manage and, 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 and really make sure that when you're running that process, consistent 
tools and methods are used which you as a, which the method person within your organization has identified. So this is the first demonstration. Um, we will first review some simulations or a simulation already in the system and then classically you have that simulation and then you will be modifying the input deck to run a second variant of that simulation to compare those results. And this is something we were going to show in this demonstration. Key points on this part is really showing consistency of the data as it is organized, managing the methods and tools in a consistent way, and really being very flexible from an end user perspective and from a methods, to, um, methods user to, to, to kind of like change their processes. With that, I will hand over to Darshan, and um, Darshan will show you the um, presentation. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, so let's go into this uh, first demonstration, which is a basic demonstration. Uh, scenario, as Michael mentioned, is that we, um, an analyst has run a baseline simulation, and then uh, he would later uh, run another variant of the simulation. So first, let's Let's say that the analyst is interested in looking at the baseline simulation, which was already run. The manager is a web-based system, so first thing you do is log into the system with uh, the account that you have, and then you see what we call as homepage. Homepage provides you a ready access to the important data for you, that is your mesh models, your design models, your variants, your projects, and your input decks. Um, the My Input Text widget that you are seeing over here uh, shows you um, or gives you links, URLs to the data objects, that is the input text, and also the processes that created um, those data objects. We are going to take a deeper look into those processes uh, a little later, but first let's um, take a look at the V1 of um, our analysis, the version 1 of our analysis. Um, let's say uh, I have um, run this analysis with Nastran, a Nastran Solution 101 analysis. Uh, when I click on the simulation, it takes me to a detailed view of the simulation. Um, with that detailed view, you can uh, start taking a look or investigating your model, um, what were the contents and components of your model, what results were generated by solving the baseline version, um, what key results, that is the post-processed objects were generated, uh, from the um, results, um, and out of those key results, uh, which reports uh, were generated. So what you are seeing here is um, the images and values that were generated um, via this uh, Solution 101 analysis. In this case, um, we integrated Nastran and Patran as tools, but really those can be um, any solver and any uh, post-processor that your organization uses. Once I go to the detailed view of the um, input deck, from there I have an access to a view that we call as pedigree viewer, which is the graph kind of view that you see on the top half of the screen. Um, this shows all the connections, um, what results, what key results, what reports um, are connected with this input deck. Everything is a URL, so you can, um, in the um, pedigree view, click on a URL, for example, of key results, then do the filtering as you would expect, and then um, go to the plot um, feature. For example, in this case, we are plotting all the stresses that were uh, related uh, to this particular input deck. If you hover your mouse on the, um, the, the bar charts, then you see the details of that. So you can uh, get into the details of your um, the values that are being plotted. Now, after the results, uh, let's take a look at the um, report that was generated. Uh, SIM Manager has got an automated uh, report generation mechanism uh, within it, um, and then you could um, preset the templates, for example, of a report to include which um, key results um, that you are interested in. Here in this case, um, what I'm trying to show is um, you can scroll through, browse through um, the um, key result images of your interest. And then those uh, images are also included in a report by way of a template. So if I go to 
um, detailed view of a report. Um, we go into a module of SIM Manager, which is called Report Generation Module. Uh, it comes with an elaborate uh, HTML user interface of its own. You can edit, you can uh, review, you can publish. At the same time, SIM Manager automatically converts those reports into standard formats like PPT and PDF. Um, so these PPT and PDF images are available, um, the reports are available in the system, and then analysts are able to provide the URLs uh, to these reports to their colleagues so that they can review and discuss. So let's say this is what my analysis uh, was for uh, the baseline version. Now I see based upon the stresses, based upon the hotspots, um, I see that um, I need to make some changes for my design to work. Let's say I decide to change thickness of one of the uh, components of this input deck. I do that and then now I want to bring in a modified input deck. Let's see how uh, this workflow um, works in, in SIM Manager. So from the durability input deck, I navigate to the variant of that input deck. And on that variant, I invoke an activity called import and simulate. Um, import and simulate allows you to bring in uh, a model file um, or an input deck file. So let's say I have a V2 of my input deck um, available with me. I will import that. And then this UI guides me through some more selections, the parameters that are related to the solver and the post processor. For example, if I want to run this input deck through Nastran, then which Nastran version do I select? Let's say in my system I have about four to different five, uh, four, four to five different Nastran versions integrated, um, and then I'm going to choose um, which Nastran version um, I want. Similarly, I could have more than one post processor. In this case, I have a Patron as a post processor integrated with this system. And then I also choose a standard um, report template, which is defined by my organization um, for generating reports of a NASTRAN solution 101 kind of analysis. I submit, import, and simulate, and then I go to a view, which is called as a uh, detailed view of a process. This view is going to give you all the information regarding the process, um, including the subsets, and including the commands that were run um, in each of the subsets, like uh, for solving and for post-processing, so on and so forth. Right there, you also have a tab of inputs and outputs. It will give you access to all the simulation configuration that was used behind the scenes. For example, simulation definition is one such object which was used behind the scenes here, it contains all the information necessary for solving a Nastran run. Um, as you can see on the pedigree viewer of simulation depth here, um, this is going to show you all the post-processing and uh, assembler and so on and so forth uh, parameters that were used um, in, in your uh, analysis. This is a very important information for, um, from many perspectives. And at this point in time, I would like to request Michael to provide um, more insights um, onto the simulation depth and uh, this pedigree view. Michael? Yes, hello. So I wanted to just emphasize some points right here. Definitely, this is a very complicated diagram, and, and, and you know, there's very many dependencies. I want, to, I want to make sure that you pick up on some key points. What we do right here is we have a data model which configures the simulation process. So you will see and you will identify, ah, there is a data object for the Nastran parameters we use as a default. There, is, there are parameters for the Patran post-processing for the key results. It means what a method person can do is in this diagram, with this information, he can modify, he can change the default settings of, for instance, the Nastran version, which he wants to use to simulate this process. At customers, like at BMW, we have maybe, for all those different load cases in crash, NVH, occupancy, safety, pedestrian simulation, um, strength assessment, engine assessment, we have maybe 500, 600 different configurations set up. And at an almost daily basis, some of those methods are changed because new strips come in, new, um, new templates are done, a new, a new solver version is introduced. So we have maybe around 
20 different solvers with each one of them two, three um, versions. So what this happens is, is this is a control panel for the methods people and the administrators to really manage in a very elegant way the changes happening in the simulation process um, in a very non-disruptive way, not having to re recode configurations, etc. And the cool, nice thing is, Every time you have configured such a thing, you exactly know how many simulations were actually done using that configuration. So you can really backtrace if you, for instance, have introduced a errorous um, script, exactly which simulations might have hit that because you can track which simulations have run with that version of, for instance, a solver which you are, which you want to determine which ones, you know, where you want to just backtrack which simulations were done that way. So um, let's say um, we um, solve uh, the simulation, the new uh, variant, and then now we want to look at the um, new simulation that is uh, being generated. Um, and also, I, of course, uh, the very reason that you created a new simulation is because probably you do also want to compare it with the uh, existing simulation. So. You go to the home page uh, and then you see that the V2 simulation is now done. Uh, when you click on V2 simulation, um, you get to the detailed view of uh, the new uh, simulation and then you can navigate uh, through the new simulation data uh, just like the previous example. Uh, so you would be able to go to the results, the key results and reports, so on and so forth. Let's do that for now. Let's take a moment to browse through all the um, all the simulation artifacts that were created um, after running this input deck. For example, the result um, that was created. Um, in this case, we are going to use a plugin uh, called Vcolab plugin to browse through the result. Um, this is a, a lightweight viewer um, which will allow you to do the post-processing operations um, like most of the uh, post-processors. Um, and this is embedded um, also in um, Sim Manager. So you could do fringe plots, uh, you could do contours, you could do um, uh, you know explode, and you could um, uh, you could put your min max and so on and so forth uh, over it, and uh, then um, inspect, um, for example, sections um, and identify the hotspots that are interested uh, that are of your interest. So after the results, let's now go over to the next part, which is uh, the report that was generated for version two. And now what we are going to do is we are going to compare this report or the version two analysis against um, version one. For that, I'm going to edit this report um, to add something uh, called seed, that is an anchor. Um, you add an anchor or a seed, uh, of version one. Right now, if you see, you only see the version two data. Um, there are two subcases. Um, so you see two subcases of version two. And now we're going to edit this report and add um, an additional seed. Uh, the seed would be, of course, version one. And as you can notice, you can select any simulation in the system uh, as long as it is comparable, and then um, you could compare um, the two simulations. In this case, I'm going to select V1 because that's what I want to do. And now if I go to one of the report sections uh, in the HTML viewer, I would see um, the uh, stress contours, uh, displacement plots for both V1 as well as V2 for both the subcases. Um, I can also go to the section on the values, uh, for example, the displacement values and compare the values. Um, I can also go to the uh, stress values uh, and compare uh, the values. This will tell me exactly which design um, is preferred design. 
I will then activate the report, which will make it live in the system, and any user in the system, including my colleague from the design department, uh, will have access to the system. He will review the report, and he will know readily what precise changes uh, should he make in his CAD model, for example, uh, to be able to um, get the um, get the design working as per the specification. This brings us to the uh, end of the uh, demo one. So we have concluded demonstration one. I hope you have seen um, how, um, how we can manage the data and with very little mouse clicks by having such a process configured, new data in a consistent manner can be generated. Now, in this demonstration, in the, in the demonstration one, what we've done is every time you do any kind of modification to the model, you are introducing a new input deck, a new variant. Now, typically, when you have a baseline model and you do optimization, you do optimizations or changes to the model at a very localized level. So what you're actually doing is you're just maybe changing a single component in the assembly of your full model while keeping everything else constant. So to support this process, what we have done right here and what we're going to demonstrate in demonstration two is instead of introducing a new version two of the model, we're just going to upload a new submodel and then run on the sim manager side the assembling of that new to a full input deck and running the simulation. And in addition, what you typically have is in many situations, you, for a specific model, not only need to run the static stiffness analysis, you also need to run a modal analysis or a frequency response analysis. So what we have done right here is we have also extended that you not only can just exchange one part, but you can then say, okay, run Solution 101, Solution 103, and Solution 111 all at once to really to, 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 to make sure that all those simulations with those different use cases all use consistently the same model. So this is the demonstration we will show you now. In the second demonstration part is um, we will exchange a part and rerun the simulation, and Sim Manager automatically tracks everything, even if you then run three more simulations, and the whole bookkeeping is done by Sim Manager in a consistent, systematic manner. Darshan, with that, I'm going to hand over again to you um, for the second part of the demonstration. Okay, so now let's go over this scenario. Um, I hope you are able to see my screen. Um, as Michael mentioned, uh, this scenario is um, instead of recreating the whole input deck, you are just going to sw uh, swap one of the components. Um, so we will use the same model um, and we will use the um, same process um, as in the previous um, example just to make sure that we are um, consistent and we are able to follow through the same example. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use a feature of Sim Manager called Simulation Generator for this demonstration. Simulation Generator is a feature of Sim Manager that allows you to assemble um, a simulation um, before solving it. So, for example, this input deck that I have already ran through the Simulation Generator has got some components. When I explode this input deck, I see that there are three components, lower flange, upper flange, and bolt. When I go to the FE representation, I see that there are five components, which means that there are a um, couple of more FE entities and there is a load case um, in addition to the um, CAD parts that were actually um, used in creating this model. If I go to the pedigree viewer of this input deck, what this viewer or what this view tells me is um, I assembled a durability input deck, um, which is the box in the green color at center, from six different mesh models. And to the left side, left hand side of those mesh models, you see three design models. This is telling me that these three design models were used um, for meshing or creating the mesh models. And as always, all these links are hyperlinks. So if you click on the mesh model, it will take you to detailed view of the mesh models. If you click on the design models, then it will show you all the design models. 
So for example, let's investigate what models were used. Um, this view is telling you that um, six different Nastran models were used. Um, and for creating those Nastran models, uh, we had three CATIA models um, on which our mesh models were based. Um, if I go to a detailed view of one of the uh, components, I see that this is the um, lower part of my assembly. Um, and what I'm going to do uh, in my V2 analysis is I'm going to exactly swap this particular part. Uh, let's say I want to change um, the thickness of this part, um, and then um, I want to run my analysis again. If I go to a pedigree viewer of this part, of this mesh model, this view will tell me where exactly uh, was this mesh model used, in which simulation. And this is a very important, super critical information for many of the customers. Um, at this point in time, I'm going to request Michael again to share some of his experiences and thoughts on uh, how critical is this for our customers uh, to know um, where their mesh models were used. Michael? Okay. Yes. So one thing we saw in many of our projects is <clears throat> that one critical step or one critical aspect in the simulation process is if you have a person creating some meshes, you know, he's always nervous if he then finally emails this mesh to his colleagues to then use that mesh in their subsequent downstream simulations. After the, he has sent that email, he has no control anymore where this mesh was used, who used it, and for which purposes was it used. Now, with this system and managing the simulation process within the system, he has this visibility, this understanding. What we noticed with many of our customers is, is that the people are now much more comfortable within the system to share and provide their information because if they have the transparency of how it is used, how it is used downstream. And if they are concerned, they can track back and see exactly where was it consumed, even to the point of seeing was it used in some critical report which may be um, um, led to a design change of the part. So this is something which we observe, just this traceability has gained in many simulation processes quite an acceleration because people are more openly sharing their information among their community. Okay, so now let's see the user interface that allows us to swap uh, this particular model. From this model, I can navigate to the uh, input decks um, that um, we're referencing or that are referencing, referencing this model. I can also go to the results, the key results, and the reports uh, that were related uh, to this uh, mesh model. What I'm going to do now is uh, from the, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to go to the input decks and I'm going to go to the variant um, that um, was uh, variant of the parent, variant of the assembly, and we are going to browse through the variant for a while to, uh, for us to know what, um, what different analysis were performed on this variant. So on the detailed view of a variant, I have a tab for input decks, uh, which will tell me what, where, uh, or what are the different input decks that are related to this particular variant. Here you see that there's a normal mode, there's a linear static, and there's a frequency response analysis input deck associated with this particular variant. If I go to the detailed view of the variant, for example, um, I can also um, browse through all the different results, key results, and the reports that were uh, generated for this variant or that belong to this variant. So in this pedigree view of the variant, you have all the information related to a variant of your product available. Now on this variant view, I have uh, an icon called simulation generator, which is the UI for swapping and running um, multiple simulations. This view that you see here um, is referred to as a matrix view. Uh, the lines or the rows here are the components in your product or, or finite element entities in your product, and the uh, columns are the simulations um, or the load cases of your product. Again, this particular uh, view is also 
a very important and central concept to many of our customers. So I'm going to pause at this point in time and I'm going to request Michael again to share uh, his thoughts and his experiences with respect to how uh, our customers use uh, the matrix view. Michael? So this is becoming, with many customers, a central mechanism where they can control their simulation processes, both managing the assembly and the load cases being conducted in a consistent manner. We have customers which have organized their assemblies into maybe 100 individual modules, so that you have 100 lines, and they can go up to maybe 10, 20 different scenarios they are running right here. So what they can do right here is they can manage in a very consistent way which material models are used, which loads are applied, which um, configuration of the product they are, uh, they are investigating is used. Something important right here is you're selecting component variants. So if there are different model representations needed to be used in those individual simulations, that is actually handled underneath by the manager. So this is a very flexible concept where the matrix can actually represent both, for instance, like at one customer site, both Nastran and Abacus simulations, and under each selected variant, you will then have a representation both for the Nastran and for Abacus. So let's continue on this view called matrix view. Um, I'm going to create a new variant uh, because I want to do V2 of my analysis by swapping one of the parts. So this user interface will give us a new variant and then it will allow us to select um, models or components for that variant. Um, every row has a drop down. So if you have more than one variants of your components in the system, you could select those. At this moment, I only have one component, uh, one variant of each component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click a button called import. Um, this is going to allow me to import a new variant, uh, V2 of my lower uh, pipe assembly. Let's say I do that and I tell the system uh, in brief, what did I change? Uh, let's say I mentioned that I changed um, some um, thickness, probably shell thickness. Uh, and then, um, as you noticed, um, the manager automatically derived this new variant from the existing variant. So that relationship is automatically created by uh, the manager for later um, reference. So if you notice that there is a um, walking icon there, which means that the manager is now importing. And then at this point in time, I'm going to submit a button called Submit All. What this does is it submits all the simulations that are there in this matrix. That is, if right now I have three simulations, 101, um, 103, and 111, but if you were to have those 10 or 15 simulations as referred by Michael, then all the 15 simulations were, um, will be submitted in one shot. And when you go to the uh, homepage, you can um, monitor all the simulations that are uh, submitted. At this moment, all three are running. You could um, have a ready access to um, the process, uh, dig into the process to, make, uh, to check which uh, command was fired, where your simulation stands for now, uh, disconnect with your HPC system uh, and your queuing system and provide you live updates. Um, at this point in time, all the three simulations are running. Um, let's say one of them is now done. Two are still running. I have one more which is complete now, and the final one is still running. I can go into the uh, detailed view of any of the simulation and see the details of that simulation, um, navigate through the system to find out uh, the changes, um, what are what is recorded. Um, find out the results, the key results, and any reports that were generated automatically um, while the process was running. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go to the 
simulation that was newly created, and then I'm going to compare it with my variant one or V1. Uh, I get a view called compare view or compare workspace in which I can compare all the details, or if I'm interested in comparing just the uh, models, just the assemblies, I can see that in this particular simulation, um, only component one was swapped. Um, so this is going to tell me what exactly differs between V1 and V2. And then for, if I'm interested in digging more details, I have those uh, box icons alongside. If I click on those, I have one of those icons, I can compare uh, the two models uh, visually. Uh, for the interest of time, right now, I'm not going to get into the details of compare, but um, this is what I plan uh, to show you for um, the, com the, the assembly uh, demonstration. Over to you, Michael. So we have seen the second demonstration. What this means is, is what you see below is, is there's a huge amount of files which were generated in those simulations, which you are generally simulating, and Sim Manager does all the bookkeeping. And essentially, if you just in exchange a file like an include, modify it, rerun the simulation, all the bookkeeping, the management of the files is done by Sim Manager. And this really allows you to really focus on your engineering work and, and, and really do the logistic of bookkeeping, the data management aspects to the system. So you are not required to check in data and attribute that. That data management aspect is totally taken care of by the manager itself. And the key important part, and I want to re-emphasize that, is that because the manager manages the process, it knows how the data was dependent on each other. So it can really track and really document to you of what was the evolution of data, what data was consumed down the road. And that is done inherently, and there's no ambiguity allowed. This is, for instance, important at one customer side, which does, you know, which does, which, are, which does certification or plans to do certification with the manager. This is, of course, very important that you have this unambiguous documentation exactly back from a report back to the design stage to the CATIA part, to the CATIA or the Pro E or, you know, the geometry itself. And this is the key um, audit trail capabilities, which just automatically without very much of your doing needs to be done. I want to point out as last point of the seminar, something also which is quite important is what you noticed is in the demonstration of what Darshan did is he exchanged a part and then did tons of simulations. He did it on a web client on a browser and he just uploaded that one file and the whole logistics of running then, all of getting, collecting all those sub-models, assembling them together into an input deck, running the solver, compressing the data, for instance, for vCollab, or running post-processing to generate the images curves, that is all done on the back-end side. You on the client side, are the, the, the workload right there is very lightweighted. So we are, have an architecture, a lightweighted architecture. Now, this architecture is the reason why companies like BMW can run thousands of simulations per day, having clients sitting in Germany, in Romania, in India, running this machinery, because we have a lightweighted architecture. The nice part right here, so what we can do is we minimize the network traffic between the client and the actual HPC and data management environment. Big data really stays in the background. So not only are you sure that nobody's modifying in the include file he shouldn't modify, he's not even, the, the data is not even passed on if not required <clears throat> to the client side. And we apply compression technologies to really make it easy for the customer to then to the client to process the data. And on the client side, you have your web UI, you have your lightweighted viewers, or of course, <clears throat> sorry, you can of course launch a post processor or a preprocessor like Patran or Anza um, or any kind of tool in this matter. The benefit is of this architecture is, is as you know, simulation models grow. The amount of models you generate, so 
Audi did once a presentation where they said is that in the last seven years, their data volume grew by a factor of thousands, so actually faster than Moore's Law. And only such an architecture like Symantec provides them was able to support this growth of the data volume uh, and processing done in their organization. And to end this is with this architecture, you actually are enabled to work much more effectively also with your supplier environment. Because now it's possible that you can actually expose such a system to a supplier. He may be a material supplier, a subcomponent supplier, and he can just upload his component and in the assembly analyze the performance of his components. And it is IP protected because you, as an OEM, don't need to expose the material models, all the other models, to that supplier. These are security mechanisms which the manager can be set up that the supplier can only upload the data as Darshan did, run the simulation, and review the post-processing results. This opens up totally new avenues of how working with suppliers and allowing suppliers to optimize their parts within your bigger assembly. With that, I want to close and give a very short summary. If you build a simulation data and process management system, please know one thing. In five years, everything will be different in the process. So you need to build a system which allows constant change. That means not only the data needs to be managed as a data management system, but also the methods and tools. You need consistent and traceable documentation of the data. You need to understand how it goes. Otherwise, you cannot scale up. Otherwise, you cannot do multiple disciplines, multiple derivatives of the product, etc. It just You will just otherwise end in a bookkeeping nightmare. And by providing an architecture such as the manager, you have the inherent scalability to have bigger models, more models, more load cases, and keep the client actually very thin. Control it through only have on the client and do the processing on the client, which really needs to happen on the client, and offloading everything else into the background. These are success ingredients for building a successful simulation process and data management system, which really increases your CAE productivity and effectivity. Okay, and with that, I want to close this presentation and um, thank you for um, listening to this demonstration and um, presentation.